Hello and thank you for tuning in to another souffle art acrylic pour painting experiment with me today. I have here a glass mirror, some glass etching cream, a little foam applicator brush, nice and squishy, a ruler, a circular cutter, um, adhesive paper, two-sided, and a nice non-etchable plastic container. What we're going to be doing here today is applying this etching cream along the edges of this mirror so that we can try pouring acrylic paint on it. This setup should help because the armor etching cream will create a whole ton of micro abrasions all along the surface. It'll chew it up and make it really rough and with all that extra roughness the acrylic paint should have enough surface tension to grip into the edges that we've etched. I'm going to try and hold this mirror up in a way that won't blind you. And you can see on the top here I've created a circle using this circle cutter set to about five and a half, five and a quarter inches on the transfer, not, I keep saying transfer paper, about five and a half inches on the adhesive paper. I've cut out this circle nice and even, centered it on the mirror as best I could and you can see that once it's cut the transfer paper comes with the paper and comes with a little sticky section. Now while I was centering it I'll go over how I did that real quick for you. First I set the the sticky part of the adhesive paper down and then using the flat edge of this ruler I gently scraped it forward like so. This pulled it down nice and flat and made sure there are no air bubbles inside and made sure it was uniform all across the surface. This is the same way that you would apply a decal or any other sticky object to a larger surface so it worked out pretty well. As for making sure it was centered, I kept the edge of the ruler right here and as I spin the table that this is sitting on, this little cake table. As I spin it, the ruler stays at the exact same mark all the way around, indicating that this is in fact center and is in fact a complete sphere, circle. I promise you I know my shapes. So now I have some of the etching cream prepared in a little, uh, little styrofoam cup here. I put my applicator in and I'm going to dab it on the edges with this. I would not recommend doing this with a good paintbrush or anything you're too attached to because this particular cream is extremely dangerous and will pretty much eat up anything you put into it. So. Don't put this on your hands, on your skin, don't eat it, don't swallow it, nothing, work in a ventilated area. This is dangerous stuff. And any tools, any brushes or whatever you use on this are probably going to get ruined. So that's why I'm using this cheap little 40 cent sponge brush that I picked up at a local craft store. All right, we're almost done completing the circle here. And then once this is done, the etching cream is supposed to wait about two to three minutes to take effect, to have etched the glass to a sufficient degree. So in just a second, I'm going to turn the camera off. I'm going to let this sit. I don't expect you to sit here and watch this dry for three minutes with me. Ooh, that is stinky. I'm extra glad I have a window open right now. Um, when this is all done, I have some plastic wrap underneath to keep myself safe and I will go rinse this off. You're supposed to use water, just plain old water to rinse off the cream so I'll be doing that and we'll return once this is ready for the next step. Welcome back, we're ready to start. First I want to share some observations on the etching cream used on the mirror. You can see here there's a very distinct difference between the overall reflective quality of the edges that had the cream applied versus the center which still has the adhesive paper that plastic stuck on top. 
So this is the level of etching I wanted to get. You can see how dull it's become overall. And to get this dullness, the first layer that I applied, which you saw recorded, that first layer didn't etch very well at all after the recommended two to three minute uh, application time. So I dried it off after washing all of it off with water, got it completely clean, and then re-cleaned the surface of this mirror with isopropyl rubbing alcohol. Uh, I don't have any Windex. I went for the rubbing alcohol and as I was cleaning this did some research and found out that's actually the best option. The rubbing alcohol will completely eliminate oils that you may have gotten on there from your fingers or skin and won't leave any streaking. So you want the glass to be as clean as physically possible. I reapplied and this time around after doing some extra reading I found that you should kind of disturb the etching cream as it's drying there. So I put the second coat on, gave it about a minute, and then used another stir stick to kind of mess around the paste that was already sitting there along the edge. That seems to have done the trick. So uh, the second application was about three to four minutes. I gave it a little extra time, and that seems to have worked for us. Now, since this is a mirror, I'm going to use colors that I think are a little more neutral and will look better in a house or with most of uh, more common home decor for our time. So I have a nice dark green, I have this kind of deep periwinkle blue which I've hand mixed and some white paint. I have silicone in the green and the blue, I'm not adding any to the white paint. And now I'm going to start pouring with a little base of green because we're going to be doing this as a dirty pour. The white will be next. This will mix, give us some extra weight and allow the colors to play off each other due to that density factor that we've talked about in previous videos. With the greens and the blues mixed in, I'm going to finish this off with white from a high angle. Really stir everything in there. And now the goal will be to rotate the tray and pour paint out on top of it get some of these air bubbles out here. Okay, I think we're ready to begin. And we'll see how well this sticks to etched glass. Alright, now that the surface has been pretty much covered, this is actually a really nice look. It's got a kind of marbled texture to it that looks like the countertops you kind of see in 90's bank movies. Uh, it's a really rich color. I'm, I'm really enjoying this one. I'm going to tap on the table a bit to help get some of the big air bubbles out and then I'm going to grab my butane torch. Which I should have ready from the start, but here it is. There we go. And get the rest of those air bubbles out. Not too much going on in the way of cell formation, but that has to do with how we've poured the paint. You may have seen a trendy new way of acrylic pouring going around on YouTube here. I think it's been called tree pouring or ring pouring. There's a few different names for it, but in essence, you're doing a dirty pour, which I'll make a little one here on the side. You're doing a dirty pour, trying to keep the flow of paint as thin as possible, and it'll just kind of pool, making these rings around itself. Then from there, you can tilt the canvas, spread it back and forth, and kind of accentuate, accentuate the rings as they're pouring. It's an interesting look. Uh, so far with experimenting with it, I haven't done any that I've been particularly fond of, but as this tray was turning earlier, I was essentially mirroring that te technique where you have a dirty pour with a stream of paint as thin as possible and allowing it to kind of slowly puddled up 
in I guess it's kind of a chain of, of tree rings that we're following each other so I'll let this paint dry we'll get back to you and see how this turns out the goal will be to wait for it to dry completely at which case we should be able to clearly see the ring where the plastic adhesive is resting from there we can carefully peel that off and we should get a very clean precise ring with the paint around the edges of our mirror after that we'll look at some tests to see if we can clean this mirror if the paint sticks on very well and if this is something you can try at home with your own level of success all right stay tuned just a second okay here we have the mirror from our little paint experiment I have gone ahead and cut out along the edges of the adhesive paper with the razor blade very carefully uh, because it wasn't quite peeling off as easily as possible so I went ahead and helped it out with that little razor blade I also want to point out that some areas the paint stuck to the etched area very well and in some areas the paint would peel off of the glass even if it was etched so I'm not sure where that distinction lies what makes the difference there but for this removal step I'm gonna go ahead and keep it cut ahead of time with the razor blade now I am gonna leave the adhesive paper on for one last step now that we've removed the uh, inner paint that doesn't need to be there and we just have this outer rim I'm gonna leave the adhesive paper on so I can add a varnish to it help protect this paint a little more all right let's stay tuned in a minute I'm gonna grab some sealer and there you have it we have a very clean mirror adhesive peeled off the paint on the side has remained on the glass even through cleaning I used isopropyl alcohol and some acetone uh, alternating between the two applications the acetone was used to help remove some of the sticky tack that was left on after removing the adhesive paper but the paint itself has stayed on I think I could have achieved a smoother surface on the paint if I had avoided using any silicone and you can also resin coat the entire mirror once it's completely clean and dry but the brand of resin that I currently have at home I haven't been able to experiment with yet and I think I'd rather avoid doing too many experiments at once so that we can kind of keep track of what's effective and what isn't so with that being said let's consider this a success you can use glass etching cream to create a surface that your acrylic paints can stick to so that's fun good information to know and I hope you've enjoyed watching thanks very much